more of Moscow's military hardware on view today in the Rostov region, close to the border with eastern Ukraine. No movement here, but the fear is that Russia is just biding its time before launching an invasion. And in Ukraine, on the front lines in Avdivka, they are combat ready. They've been fighting Kremlin-backed separatists for eight years. Enemy using a lot of uh, the types of uh, grenade launchers. It's also a uh, really heavy weapon. They can use it 24 hours per seven. So uh, now we try to like uh, stay like in the shadows. Uh, so if it, if we have trenches, we all move on with them because. Uh, Enemy also like to use in drones. This destroyed hangar provides some cover from pro-Moscow rebels. Troops here call it the skeleton. We've been asked not to speak too loudly because Russian separatist fighters are very nearby, near enough to hear us. Since we've been here, there's been shelling and this front line has been more active in recent days. There's a real sense now that this conflict is building. So it was just two days ago. Uh, it's only two hits from the hall of uh, fire into us. It's, it was like a 12 hits in this region. Ivan, who is 30, knows that death could come raining down at any moment. Uh, I also think about it. It's very uh, scary for me. Uh, I, as, I, as a simple guy, I also afraid uh, to be hurted or die here and uh, that's why I'm st stand here in the armor and try uh, to to do my job as uh, possible to stay alive. That's a daily battle. They scan for enemy snipers who will also be scanning for them. If Russian troops invade Ukraine, there could be many young men lost on both sides. And for the very young here, lessons in survival. A practice run taking children down to the bomb shelter, packing them to the rafters. Normally it happens twice a year. Today, an extra drill as this nation faces a moment of grave danger. The tempo has changed at the front lines in eastern Ukraine. It's a lot more active. We stopped dead because we heard the rumble of shelling. It was time to pick up the pace. And there were other hazards along the way. We moved carefully past minefields on both sides. We're covering the distance now to the front on foot. Ukrainian troops here tell us that they are ready for whatever may come. But no one knows what that will look like, what Vladimir Putin's endgame is. And if it is a full invasion, then Ukrainian troops will be quickly outnumbered and outgunned. Taras, who's 24, shows us defensive positions against Kremlin-backed rebels less than half a mile away. They've been opening fire with heavy weapons for three days, he says. The situation has gotten worse, but we tolerate it and we wait. I think Putin is doing it on purpose to provoke us, so it looks like we are invading. Nearby, a crossing point that leads to the separatist enclaves. There's tight security for civilians traveling from Ukrainian government territory to the other side. This is one of only two locations where people can cross to reunite with loved ones. The East has been painfully divided for eight years. It takes permission and patience. Just ask Larissa, who does this every six months. She's a cancer patient returning home after a checkup in a government hospital. We, the people, don't want a war to happen, she tells me. We want to live. We want to love everyone and give them a hug. 
Svetlana is coming in the opposite direction from separatist territory with great difficulty. A gruelling trip for the 81-year-old. We couldn't see our children for two months, she told me. Our great-grandson was born. We hadn't seen him. There are very real fears for Ukraine and for security in Europe. And beyond the geopolitics, here on the ground, the human toll could be immense. Orligiran, BBC News, Eastern Ukraine.